hold the, the <laughs> we, can, we can hold each end of it. <laughs> Phil here, Jonathan here. Oh, oh, oh. Phil here, got Jonathan Gazee, our product development guru. Uh, we're here to do some test fit install on this JD7 M2 of a precision front control arm bearing, a piece that we've had for a number of chassis over the years. Uh, E8X, E9X, F8X, and well, as you can see, we've got the front torn apart a little bit because uh, not so easy to get to this, this thing, is it? No, it's not, especially with all the, the pieces being sharp. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I cut my that... finger on it, and that's all I'm thinking about now. <laughs> no, it's not. We had to pull the entire front end apart to gain access to the bolt here, but other than that, it really hasn't been too bad. Yeah, we're, uh, we're mainly trying to get this joint here, which uh, actually not quite as bad as some of the old ones, right? This is a little bit beefier? The diameter of the bear, of the bushing itself is smaller, but I believe that'll allow for less deflection. Yeah, the I swear there were more voids and whatnot in the E8X, 9X, F8X1, so it looks like BMW is beefing these up a little bit. However, still tons of deflection in this, and we're planning to move to a sealed ball joint in a housing that, that presses into this super easy once you get it apart. We're gonna wrap up getting this test fit uh, prototype piece installed and looking forward to next steps of getting this produced. Absolutely. Ah, she doesn't, play, she, she doesn't make A noises. She just says ah, like an earthquake. And, and, uh, earthquake? <laughs> she has a head ack and she says a little. A head ack? <laughs> all right. You're a head ack. Rich. Rich is saying some weird stuff, but that's all right. Well, we're here about to do a little bit of some test fitments exploration, make sure things fit properly on precision front control arm bearing for G8X chassis. So if we have one, what are we looking at here? Right now we're actually trying to, right now what are we doing? We're doing instructions. Uh, instructions and install process on these is a little bit different than previous generation cars. Um, just gaining access to the bolt that goes through this into the subframe. So trying to come up with a easy, low effort solution, hopefully. Yeah, on the G87, we kind of had to take apart the whole front end because of this like piece that mounts to the frame rail. However, it didn't end up being that bad. I didn't do the work, but it seemed like it wasn't that bad to get everything off. So maybe it's not gonna be terrible. Although, Rich is over here like struggling away to get a few fender liners off. I'm just kidding, he's doing okay. So yeah, we're just trying to document the process. Got a little road grind, road debris in there and see what all it takes to get this baby installed. All right, what do we got? We... What we got are three people sitting on their knees when we could use a lift and raise the car up. So no. let's, let's yeah, do we, that. we could do that. I thought you were gonna go up all the way earlier. <laughs> Whatever, Rich. So the big issue... We're on like the wrong side of it, right? Is that there's a bolt in here and to get that bolt out, you kind of got to get all this stuff out. To get all this stuff out, you kind of get to get all of this stuff out. It's not as simple of an install process as it would be on the E8X, 9X, F8X chassis. Can you get that off without... Oh, you know what, I think you can, because you can slide this... Oh, no. I don't know if you can hear that because Rich doesn't have a mic on, but he just went, oh no. I think he sees something, but he doesn't want to tell us what it is yet. He's gonna wait till he actually runs into the problem. This guy here, the uh, it's like a, a center connecting piece between this subframe and like the front crash support. If you can pull that out, you should be able to get access to oh. that bolt. Oh, 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 hey yo. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. All right, so that's sick. So with a professional mechanic and a lift, that was what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? All right, realistically, it wasn't that bad, actually, now that I know what to do. We didn't have to take out the whole front end. We were able to remove this bracket. I say we, Rich did the dirty work. You guys saw him. Um, but fortunately, a couple of bolts on this piece that kind of connects this front crash support, I guess, to the bumper to the main frame rail and able to remove that and gain access to this bolt up here that holds the, the tension strut in, get that bolt out, and now you're in business to swap out the arm 
and upgrade your braking and handling performance with our precision front control arm bearing. So awesome. Not as difficult as we thought. So looking forward to being able to get these on cars out in the wild. That's me. I'm the instructions guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, old timer James wanted to share a little story. Knowledge. About this from some uh, days in his racing in years past. All right. So what is this? This is a, we call it the pre precision front thrust arm bearing, right? Front control arm front bearing, control. F cab. All right. I learned about this piece in one of the most painful ways possible. So it's, it's pretty typical for us in racing to have spherical bearing components. But when we moved into the Grand Am series back in 2010, we were not allowed to have spherical bearings. So that meant that we were using a variety of things, whether it be Delrin or urethane, or uh, we were doing some casting compounds uh, as like inserts and stiffeners for a period of time. But we were trying to stiffen things up without using spherical bearings. And in 2011, we started racing M3s. We did that for a full season and we just never had it together under braking and it was super, super frustrating. Then suddenly we realized at the end of the season, and I think it was 11 race season, and you know, however much money, I'm sure it was a million bucks we'd spent on developing two cars and racing, et cetera. We realized that the reason we sucked is because a spherical bearing was allowed in this location on the GS cars. It wasn't, it wasn't published anywhere, it was just tribal knowledge that if you ran one of those cars, that's what you did. But we were still running it like the non-M cars, and that stuff, it's gotta be spherical. It's gotta be this solution. So what happens? So we, we ran with the stock arm, and you could see it on a KNC rig. KNC rig, five grand, you put your car up on, on this big machine and it moves it. It loads it, it um, as, as if it was on the track. This is not a shaker, this is a KNC that loads the machine. And you could see this thing moving. We did a range of solutions. We, we started out with inserts to stiffen the, the factory bushing. Then we went with a PowerFlex Black Series, which is an awesome piece, but it wasn't, it wasn't solid. And that's, you know, for a close to 4,000 pound car with all, all the fuel, you needed solid. We went with Delrin, which is an almost solid material. And it was crazy because we didn't want to do Delrin initially because when, when the suspension goes up and down, this arm does this kind of thing. And so it's got to twist in the bearing or with the Delrin, the arm was twisting, which is crazy. That's not good. That was, it, it was wildly uncomfortable, but it was better on the racetrack. And so we're like, all right, Delrin, and we'll just kind of, and do not do that on your car, but we'll, we'll just see when the arm breaks because we're, we know we're fatiguing it. Something's gonna break here. It didn't in the first season, but then we went testing at Daytona. We realized what was going on. We put these parts on the car, mm. boom, almost a second faster, all in braking. And you could, you could feel it in the car, you could see it on the data. What happens is this thing starts chasing its tail with ABS. It reaches the limit of travel with a, with a stock bushing, uh, which does move and travel. It reaches the limit of travel, it stops, and the, then the tire skids, and then the ABS says, oh, gotta, gotta release some brake. And it releases the arm to move back in its back position and then load again. So it's just this oscillation as this thing is loading and unloading and playing with the ABS as it's coming on and off. And I mean, the feel of the car when you put one of these things on is just totally different in braking. And then a bunch of years ago, we came out with a piece that's a sealed, sealed bearing using the factory sealed bearing, which is, you know, in racing, you don't really care about salt and, you know, lifespan, et cetera. But we went with the factory sealed bearing that's on these cars, you know, in a different location mm -hmm. as a road car. And so now this thing's a road car part, and I feel wonderful about putting this on every single car. So I wanted to chime in about this part because after getting my teeth kicked in for a year straight, I have a special love for this part. And honestly, I feel like it's one of those things that everybody that drives these cars on the track should have on their car. It doesn't matter if you daily it because it's a sealed bearing and it's not immediately carrying the load. It doesn't add NVH. This is, this is one of these parts that the factory put in there as a, as a rubber piece and they saved a bunch of money. But this is how I would do that. And you'll absolutely see the difference on the racetrack. Yup. That was long-winded.
That was long-winded. That was a lot. I got nothing. That was an impassioned speech, I got, Phil. I was, say, there's, there's a lot of emotion. I was like, what do I even add to that? I got nothing to add. Yeah. You want to say mm. something about them being available now? Yeah, they're available now. <laughs> 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 so that was E9X James was talking about. Can you hear that? Probably, you can probably hear that. So that was E9X James was talking about. And really, this is the same design used on a plethora of applications. So we've got E9X, F8X, and now G8X to cover a range of platforms to help this braking performance on track. And now you're saying 8X, uh, F8X, G8X, but we're also developing these things for non-M cars too. Yep. So the, the G2s, G3s, F3s, et cetera. Um, when they went to this multi-link front suspension on the three series, then four series and two series, that's, that's when this thing started taking the braking load and being a critical part of the equation. Yep. So check this thing out at bimworld.com. And as always, for more content like this, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You ready to go? Should be an awesome race weekend. We are ready to kill it this year. It's good. It's going to be a wild ride.